uh, we'll jump on that, but we'll, we'll kick start. So thank you everyone for joining us and um, really appreciate those that have been able to uh, jump on board today. And um, I, my name's Sam Freeman. I'm the Trade and Investment Commissioner with Austrade uh, in Bengaluru. And I'm joined today by some of our partners in this session. Simone, who's the CEO of InsureTech Australia. Uh, Prerak Sethi, co-founder of the India Insurance, uh, sorry, India InsureTech Association. For us, InsureTech's been an area we've been looking at uh, for a little while now in Austrade, and um, it's a really fascinating sector because we're seeing a real evolution both in Australia and in India. Um, so we're looking forward to discussing it on this call and, and diving deep into the ecosystem in India. And we've put together quite a good panel with some questions um, that Ch Simone will chair. But for now, I'm going to kick it over to Simone to uh, launch us off on this session. Thanks, Simone. Thanks, Sam. Um, yeah, it's great to be here. Um, I'm coming to you from um, the Gadigal land of the Europe uh, nation, and I'd like to pay my respects to our elders, our past, present and future who are on the call. Um, so in Tech Australia, we've been going um, in some form since 2017, so uh, over five years now. So it's uh, a fairly mature ecosystem and we're an independent not-for-profit association and we work with InsureTech India and many of the other international associations. Uh, we have about 90 InsureTech members, so um, certainly smaller than the, the Indian cohort, but, but quite a mature sector. And we support uh, InsureTechs right across um, all, all sectors of insurance and right across the insurance value chain. And everything from founders um, with very small businesses that are still coming through to very established um, businesses that are already in multiple countries. And one of the, the key things that we do, um, I think particularly being the insurance industry here is quite mature. Um, but the size of the market is smaller than certainly some of the um, the other markets. So one of the things that we always uh, focus on with our members is it's really important to be looking globally and, and where your uh, proposition can fit into other markets. And so working with Austrade and, and going to international delegations is a core part of what we do and really being able to, to bring those connections and members. And so that was particularly why I um, was keen to to have to be involved in this session with India. It's such a vibrant market um, in terms of the size and the maturity and, and the tech sector. And there's always already very strong uh, ties between India and Australia culturally. We have a number of, obviously, the established tech businesses here. Um, but, you know, in my sort of last year, there has already been some, some early discussions with other um, Indian businesses wanting to come to Australia. And certainly some of our insure techs um, who are on the call or watching this later who are interested in really understanding um, the Indian market and, and that opportunities. Um, so that was probably all I want to say um, at the moment as an intro, but um, I think this will just be a great sort of starting point to really understand a little bit more about what is, you know, a huge and diverse market. Um, back to you, Sam, I think. Yeah, thanks, Simone. And um, Prak, I think it'd be great to hear from you about the Indian side of things, the Indian Association and how you see the industry evolving. Uh, here in, in market. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Simon. Hi, everyone. My name is Frederick City. I'm one of the co-founders of the India InsureTech Association and the founder of RIA Insurance. Uh, the India InsureTech Association, by the way, first time we started by saying is very excited to partner with InsureTech Australia and Austrade uh, to organize this event today. Uh, as Simon, you mentioned the partnership between Australia and India as countries continues to grow across sectors. Uh, and I'm quite confident, by the way, that the insurance sector has the potential for a high level of collaboration. So I'd like to welcome all the insurtech companies and insurance companies from Australia who have joined here today. Uh, let me start off by giving you a little bit of overview about insurtech and insurance in India. Uh, the insurtech industry, by the way, uh, has developed rapidly since 2017 in our country. Uh, and there's been a significant push since the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the sector has seen multiple growth in the last couple of years. The growth, by the way, we want to just quickly measure it, right? Insurtech funding in India uh, propelled from $290 million in 2020 uh, to over $800 million in 2021. That, that's how rapidly we've grown. Uh, let me highlight a few trends for the audience here today. Uh, trend number one is uh, India, by the way, has seen a number of new and funded insurtechs come up since 2020 who've enabled digital distribution on the ground in spaces like employee benefits, embedded insurance, and rural insurance, and has led to more innovative digital experiences for the customers at the point of sale. Trend number two, 
Uh, we've also seen insurers and insurance brokers now actively partnering with insurtechs for adoption of technology to drive excellence across the entire insurance value chain, uh, especially in areas such as personalized product design, uh, digitally enabled Salesforce, proactive risk management, claims, etc. Uh, trend number three, uh, the last two years have been amazing. Because of the rise of insurtech in India, we now have excellent talent in technology, data science, product management, uh, which now also has knowledge of insurance. This wasn't the case, by the way, in my mind before 2020. Uh, significantly. Uh, and hence, I think India has the potential to provide an excellent technology talent pool to Australian companies that are present here today. Uh, trend number four, finally, from the government of India side, we're seeing a few great initiatives uh, that will propel InsurTech to the front uh, of the line, such as the recently launched uh, Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission, uh, which is a healthcare mission. Uh, and this offers tremendous promise for the use of technology and data to improve uh, health accessibility and drive standardization in healthcare in India. Uh, and health insurance and medical coding standards. Uh, there are other government of India initiatives, and these are what Australian companies should look at, such as Aadhaar, UPI, Account Aggregators, India Stack, uh, that continue to open up more data sources to, and help guide digitization on the ground. Uh, and then finally, our uh, regulator, IRDA, which is the insurance regulator, has also been bringing tremendous reforms over the last few months uh, under the leadership of its chairperson, Mr. Panda. Uh, tons of opportunities for insurtechs from Australia, uh, you know, what we are finding is that insurance companies in India, by the way, are setting up digital uh, units, right? These are digital units that historically or the last few years are focused on digital distribution or they focus on digitization of processes. But these digital business units are now looking to partner with insurtechs, not just from India, but globally. Uh, they're looking for products across uh, underwriting, claims, use of data across the business. Uh, they're looking to really develop uh, unique insurance products, especially in general insurance and non-life insurance, where there's a tremendous potential uh, for us to learn from a more mature market like Australia uh, and the kind of products that have been built there. Um, so Australia and Shortex are welcome, uh, and they should come to the country, and they should find uh, opportunities for collaboration. Uh, now, let me quickly spend a couple of minutes on the India Insurtech Association and how we can help Australian Insurtex to enter into India. First, the India Insurtech Association, or IIA, uh, started as a conversation between Shwetan Garma, Sarvajit Mandal, and me in August 2020. Uh, so we are actually only about two years old. Uh, while InsurTech was a hot topic of conversation in India, we had a bunch of entrepreneurs like Vikal and me on WhatsApp groups exchanging messages. Uh, we found that there was no formal body uh, driving interactions between startups, companies, professionals within the space. And when we looked outside of India, almost every region had an InsurTech association, including Australia. Uh, and so we founded the IIA or the India Insurtech Association as a not-for-profit that brings together startups, insurers, reinsurers, policymakers, service providers, and insurance professionals onto a single platform. Uh, the growth for us has been great. In just over two years, we've reached 175 plus members. Um, here are a few different initiatives, by the way, where we feel that the India Insurtech Association can help insure Australian companies, Australian insurtech companies uh, present here today to build their presence in India. Number one, uh, we recently published our second annual report on India and Shirtek landscape and trends in collaboration with BCG, which is available on our website. You should download this report to just boost your understanding of the India and Shirtek opportunity. Uh, Pranay is here from BCG, who will also be speaking on the next panel and will share his insights. Uh, two, we also continue to work on various thought leadership initiatives, such as working groups on various topics uh, related to the use of technology and insurance. We've got a deep tech in insurance series. We've been organizing hackathons. Uh, and we're also working on the idea of an India and Shirtek stack. Um, so if there are Australian companies and short companies that like to contribute to these initiatives, reach out to us. Uh, by the way, we hold two to three virtual thought leadership seminars or sessions every single month on a diverse set of topics related to InsurTech. So if you follow up, join these virtually, uh, it'll get you started quickly, right on the ground. Uh, and then we have also, by the way, organized our first annual event in April 2022, uh, which had over 230 participants from the InsurTech industry. Uh, we are planning a second annual event in April 2023 where we expect over 600 participants. Uh, we hope to see you there. Um, India's great talent for uh, uh, you know, um, uh, both insurance, underwriting actual talent, great talent for technology. Reach out to us. We've got partnerships with National Insurance Academy and BIMTEC, uh, which are academic institutions that work uh, in insurance. We've got a partnership with the Institute of Actuaries of India. Uh, and I know Australia has got a fantastic actuarial community, right? So there's potential collaboration opportunities there. Uh, and then finally, the India InsurTech team is available to help you. That's why we are here. Please reach, you, reach out to us through InsurTech Australia. Reach out to us through Austrade. Uh, we are happy to help you make the right connections in India, whether it's your first BD connection, your first two team members on the ground in India, uh, finding an Indian partner, or just about anything you need. Uh, if you've got a substantial presence in India, join us as a member. That's what I'll say. Uh, thank you, and I look forward to a discussion here.
I would Thanks, Pramak. And look, it's it's delightful. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing, really, for Austrade's sake to be working with you and Simone, you know, and, and your two organisations who are so passionate about the sector. And, and that obviously comes out in, in what you were saying. Um, you know, especially in India, uh, insurance is something that's been really disrupted by tech, as you pointed out. You know, it's gone from a very traditional industry um, uh, with, you know, some of the big government players to now being so diverse in, in what the insure tech startups have brought in. So, look, I'm not going to talk too much about that. Um, we've got a couple of uh, fantastic panellists who can share some really good insight on the sector, how it's evolved and, and where the opportunities and challenges lie. Um, Prane is joining us as the MD and senior partner with the Boston Consulting Group. He's based in Mumbai. And um, Brunei, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate you joining us. Um, and, and Vikul Goyal, who is the founder of um, Bima Plan, which is an insure tech startup. Uh, Vikul is, is based in, in Bangalore and um, has a, a fantastic organization uh, that he's come up with. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a sign of the kind of possibilities that are available in India for insure tech startups. So, he can talk a lot about the reality of, of what it's like to have your own company in market trying to navigate the ecosystem. So I'm going to hand over to Simone um, for, for the panel session. So thank you both for joining us and over to you, Simone. Thank you, Sam. Um, yeah, no, I'm really excited and looking forward to learn a lot more about um, that sector. So I thought I'd just kick off and, and Sam's already given a, a, a great, a bit of an intro um, to our two panellists, but I, uh, I'll ask um, each of them to just uh, give a little bit more about themselves, um, their role, and really how are they fitting in and working with the Indian insurers and in the insure tech ecosystem, um, just to give us a bit more context. I'll start with you, Pranay. Sure, thanks, Simon. Uh, so I'm an MD and senior partner with BCG. Uh, I've had the chance to actually look at the sector for the last 20 years, 20 plus years, ever since it opened up in India since 2000. I've had a chance to work with insurers since then. I'm part of our global insurance leadership team for BCG, but I also lead our insurance practice in India. Uh, work very actively with both PNC and life insurers. Uh, we've been closely engaged with Prerak and the team and InsureTech Association. So, you know, we've seen that uh, organization and, you know, the activities that they've been doing evolve quite closely over the last two years. We also believe that in a, in a highly regulated industry like India, it's, it's important about how you shape policy. So we've, uh, and how do you shape the agenda going forward? India is relatively, a, you know, a young insurance sector in that sense. We work very actively as part of various industry committees with the regulator. So, for example, when the regulator was thinking about setting up the regulatory sandbox, we, we were there to share some of our thoughts. Uh, and as the regulatory roadmap is evolving over the next few years, especially under the leadership of Mr. Panda, we work closely with, uh, with them. So happy to share my thoughts uh, today. Thanks for the opportunity. Right, thank you. And uh, Vikul, will you also give us a little introduction to yourself and, and your experience in the sector? And uh, I think you're on mute. <laughs> Hi, uh, hope you can hear me now. Thanks, Simone, and uh, thanks, Sam, for inviting me. And uh, uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, so I'm uh, Vikul. I'm the founder of uh, Bima Plan. We're an insure tech platform where we work with different insurers, both life and non-life, uh, to co-create affordable insurance products for the missing middle, uh, which has sort of largely been underserved, uh, you know, till date, uh, as far as uh, you know, formal sort of risk protection is concerned. And uh, so we work with insurers to create the right kind of products which are affordable and uh, distribute through an embedded insurance uh, platform where we work with different um, network partners that have the reach uh, across the length and breadth of the country to be able to offer uh, a related or an embedded product as part of that user journey. So essentially kind of trying to uh, come up with uh, essential use cases uh, in the life cycle of a business to cover their users uh, for, for any kind of risk that is associated. Um, it's, it's been an early journey for us. We started about two years ago. Uh, we are funded by Y Combinator and uh, a few few of the global VC funds. Uh, so it's been, been an exciting journey full of learning and I'm looking forward to learning from this panel. Thank you so much. 
Great, thank you. Um, Prana, I wonder um, if you would just give us a bit more um, of some insights into the in Indian insurance market. I guess particularly, as you said, you've been working with the regulator and um, you know maybe some insights as to, to what they're doing, but uh, what are the things that insurers should be aware of in terms of the market structure and, and some of the drivers of change? Sure, someone. Uh, just one quick clarification. Can you hear me clearly? Because the audio is a bit disturbed at my end. Is, yep. Am I audible? Yep, yep. Go okay, ahead. got it. Okay. You know, so uh, let me just talk about some big themes that are playing out in the sector, right? One is, um, I think digital transformation has been a buzzword for the... Um, digital transformation has been a buzzword in the sector for the last couple of years, but now it's a reality. And what I mean by that is that people are eventually realizing, and most insurers, especially the large insurers, whether it's public sector or private, that unless and until you transform yourself in the right manner using tech and data, it's going to be a struggle to win in this industry going forward over the next few years. So, right, you're going to see massive investments in as far as insurers are concerned, large insurers are concerned in technology and data to just transform themselves. And that opens up big opportunities for insurtechs in terms of partnering with insurers, right? Both insurtechs in India and, you know, firms like Whipple, uh, what Whipple is driving, what, uh, you know, the others have been doing, but also for Australian insurtechs. The other theme is, if you look at it, India is a highly underpenetrated market, right? Especially around life and health insurance. And that's a big, big priority for the government. And that's, uh, especially in the last few months, it's been really on the mind of the policymakers, the regulators. So how do you drive penetration? And that's where, you know, some of the things that Vickle, for example, are talking about are critical. That's where some of the things in terms of how do you actually drive product innovation? How do you expand distribution? Which is going to be important. And then there are certain segments where you're going to see big moves. Health insurance is going to be one of the segments where you're going to see pretty rapid innovation over the next few years. And there's a few reasons for that. One, under penetration, but you know what COVID has done is it's accelerated digital adoption as far as consumers are concerned. They're ready to adopt you know, digital healthcare solutions. The government, from a government perspective, it's a big push to, let, uh, to drive 1 billion Indians getting covered you know, over the next few years. Uh, as far as the national health stack is concerned, that's going to be a game changer if it takes off. You can see what's happened on the payment side, which is what UPI has done and transformed payments. If the national health stack really takes off, it can really transform healthcare delivery in India and health insurance in India. So that's going to be a large opportunity as, you know, insurtechs also think about it. Uh, there is also a segment of uh, small and medium enterprises. You know, about a third of India's economic output comes from SMEs. Again, a sector which has been a segment which has been underpenetrated as far as insurance delivery is concerned. You're seeing some insurtechs create solution uh, to actually take it to the SME segment. I mean, the last theme right, is, um, and some things which have been ushered in because of the regulatory interventions is product innovation. And uh, what you see on the underwriting side as far as data is concerned, it's going to be a, you know, a real game shifter in the next few years, right? The regulator believes that unless and until you facilitate product innovation, you cannot drive penetration. And that's where you see certain moves that are playing out. And insurers are also realizing that unless and until you really tap into the power of data, whether it's around pricing, underwriting, creating different solutions, it's going to be difficult to really unlock both. And that's where, again, there would be opportunities for insure techs in terms of how they can partner with insurers. Back to you, Simone. Thank you. It's fascinating. And, um, you know, when we were talking in, in the pre-sessions before of, of just the sort of the fundamental difference between the Indian and Australian markets in terms of, you know, health and this opportunity in health and life insurance and the, the um, you know, motor and those household type products being, you know, a sort of further out priority. It's almost sort of the opposite to the Australian market where people insure their car first and, and don't worry about their income until um, till much later. So it's, um, yeah, really interesting to have those, um, those insights. Um, Vikul, I was sort of looking through your LinkedIn profile and what you're saying before around how you're targeting the middle and you're making insurance affordable for the for the next billion Indians. Um, I guess what what do you see as as the opportunities um, in this market and and for those where are the the opportunities for those that are sort of wanting to to kind of launch and and understand more um, coming from an outsider's perspective. Yeah, Simone, so, you know, when we were looking to start or, you know, sort of in the early uh, initial sort of brainstorming phase of starting Bima plan, you know, I came across a very interesting fact, which kind of blew me away. Uh, the average uh, premium of life insurance in India is about $2,000. Um, and that's also the, the sort of uh, GDP per capita number in India, right? So, which essentially means that a very large part of the population 
cannot afford uh, insurance because it is, uh, you know, highly priced, right? There are no affordable uh, products that are available for someone who earns, say, uh, $5,000 a year. They cannot spend $2,000 in insurance premium, right? Maybe they can spend $50 or $100, right? So that's sort of, um, you know, a very, very striking sort of fact that we, we came across. And when we looked at the reason for why that is the case, there are two reasons, uh, you know, to my mind. One, uh, you know, India is a supply constrained market, right? FDI has opened up recently and therefore there was limited uh, capacity that insurers had in order to be able to underwrite different kinds of products or products for different segments. Secondly, a large part of the distribution was driven by highly offline channels, uh, which were very uh, physical branch based or, or manpower, uh, you know, intensive, including banks and brokers and, uh, you know, independent agents. Now, due to the nature of their, uh, you know, high fixed costs, they were not able to sell uh, a $50 or a hundred dollar kind of a product. So, I think what we needed to think about was a complete uh, change and not an incremental sort of an improvement, but creation of a completely different distribution channel that would be able to reach out to that missing middle uh, population uh, who could afford a $50 or a $100 product and be profitable at the same time for you know various players in the value chain, right? And I think that's where digitization kind of plays a massive role where you change the, you know, sort of shift the paradigm and, and say that I'm going to rethink this whole value chain and I'm going to not only look at one piece in isolation, but going to look at, uh, look at the whole thing um, over a full stack platform. And that's sort of what we attempt to do at Dima Plan, right? And, and, and I think that is sort of the approach, you know, all the way from product innovation, which, um, you know, Pranay mentioned uh, to how do you distribute that through the right channels in a profitable manner and reach out to the customer rather than sort of taking the more traditional approach of saying, this is the product that I have and, you know, I'm going to push it down, you know, to the customer because, because that's what I have to sell through the channels that I've already established, right? So I think at a broader level, this is, this is sort of uh, the framework that we look at to be able to increase the penetration or the adoption um, uh, to to this you know massive segment and and that's where uh, there's a lot of opportunity that I see for technology companies or in short techs, uh, Indian or Australian and I think uh, you know like Prerak mentioned in his opening remarks, uh, India in short tech association is only two years old. Most of the funding that we have received in this sector has been largely in the last two to three years. And so, so, so as a, as an industry, we are very new and, uh, you know, there's a op massive opportunity for entrepreneurs like us to collaborate with mature companies or, uh, you know, platforms that have already seen success that have already gone through those cycles of product development of, uh, you know, adoption and, and, and improvement and, and sort of partner with us to access the Indian market. Right. And, and in my view, it's it's harder to kind of get into that whole distribution space, but technology, uh, you know, uh, uh, brings in a, a huge sort of uh, leverage where, you know, it kind of creates a win-win proposition for, you know, folks at both ends. Over to you. Yeah, I mean, it's just um, such a such a huge opportunity and, and really that um, just this scale of the speed, I think, and, and probably the digital adoption over the last few years. Um, it's almost like you're able to, to jump ahead of, you know, maybe some of the, the Australian or other businesses that are, are more of an incremental um, innovation. Um, I wanted to explore the sort of regulatory um, government aspects because it is so kind of core to the insurance industry, kind of wherever it is all over the world. You know, we often talk about how highly regulated it is. Um, and it'd be really useful to have a bit more insight into, you know, what are some of those things that, um, you know, Australian businesses need to be thinking about um, when coming into the Indian market. Um, you know, we've said that the, the regulator is quite open and, and driving change, but what are the what are the factors that um, in the short tech should be um, getting up to speed with and their, their sort of entry? Pranay, your views on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, 
you know, Simon, as, as you all would know, I mean, currently we are in a bit of a state of flux as far as how regulations are going to evolve. But let me just highlight some themes which are important rather than specific regulations, right? There is a view that uh, innovation, as we've all said, is going to be a key lever for unlocking growth and penetration in India. I think that is recognized across, you know, policymakers in India. And, you know, there is also a view that it really needs to be mainstream and tangible. Uh, there is also a view that there is a fair bit of innovation that's happening in the insurtech community. And how do we integrate the insurtech community and make them mainstream is something that is on the minds of policymakers, right? The third thing that uh, policymakers also understand and the way it's played out in other more, uh, you know, evolved markets where insurers and insurtechs have been collaborating is that the best way to facilitate innovation is where insurers and insurtechs can actually collaborate, right? Through right corporate structures, you know, through a certain other facilitated mechanisms. So, you know, these are certain things that the policymakers do recognize, right? So in our view, uh, you will see a more facilitative regulatory environment going forward, which helps ensure techs become more mainstreams, which actually facilitates a high level of collaboration between insurers and insure techs. Uh, insurers increasingly realize and acknowledge the opportunity offered by insure techs, both Indian and global, in terms of how they can actually uh, accelerate their digital transformation and digital innovation, and they, therefore, you know, they've been also engaging with the regulators and the policymakers so that they also have the flexibility to collaborate with insure techs. So you will see a more facilitative environment. But I would highlight a couple of things, and that's where it's important to actually look at how it's played out in the fintech space, right? You know, the fintech space is a bit, you know, ahead of the curve as far as insure techs are concerned. If I look at on the lending space, the payment space, uh, you had a fair bit of uh, innovation happening in the last decade, right? But you've got the regulator, you know, establishing certain guardrails to uh, make sure that there is the right quality, there is the right financial health of fintechs. So it would serve insurtechs well to, you know, make sure that they have the right guardrails in place as far as the quality of what they offer is concerned. For example, from an insurer uh, regulator perspective, uh, ensuring that, you know, the best customer experience is delivered through whatever is offered is, you know, paramount. It's it's pretty, you know, important for the regulator. So if you have an insure tech who is really, you know, focused around it, how do you make sure that that's top of mind from an insure tech perspective? So make sure that, you know, quality of delivery or quality of solutions they offer is critical. And the second thing that I will highlight is the financial health of insure techs, right? That's going to be important as insure techs become more mainstream and as insurtechs actually collaborate with insurers. So, you know, in summary, you will see a, a much more facilitative environment over the next 12 to 24 months. You will start to see certain moves in that uh, dimension, but, you know, that will also place a, a higher premium in terms of, you know, quality of delivery, financial health of insurtechs, and you know, those who could really stand out, you know, are the ones who will really benefit from that environment. Yeah, that's great. Um, I was going to ask you, Vico, as well. I mean, what's your perspective, I guess, being an insurtech and having built that, what are the sort of, the standard sort of factors that that um, the insurtechs need to think about. Uh, you mean from a regulatory standpoint? Yeah, in terms of when they're wanting to partner with the insurers and um, from a from a customer point of view, are there particular kind of givens that that are uh, um, they need to be making sure they have in place? No, I think uh, you know definitely uh, you know insurance is a heavily regulated space and as prene mentioned there are a lot of uh, changes that are being discussed at the policymaker level uh, but i do believe that uh, you know the framework does offer uh, a lot of flexibility in terms of how uh, an insurtech uh, essentially can engage with uh, you know with with the entire value chain whether it's on the distribution side where you have um, various sort of intermediary licenses um, that uh, uh, that you know that a company or a distributor can get and sort of engage with with the manufacturers or the carriers, um, and uh, you know even as a technology service providers. I think I think where uh, the regulation might need to open up is uh, you know sort of and there are, there have been certain moves there on you know sort of creating a sandbox for uh you know new products and you know sort of use and file guidelines that have come about so you know that does give some flexibility to both the insurers as well as the insurtex to to experiment with uh, new ideas uh i think as we go along uh in you know in the overall journey i think that should if, if we can remove certain, um, you know, frictions and sort of, you know, getting that in place, you know, there are limits on the number of 
uh, products you can do in a sandbox and, and so on. And, and, you know, the regulatory approvals that take time. And I think, uh, you know, as, as we sort of go along and make that process a bit more efficient and inclusive, uh, that will surely help, uh, you know, companies like us. The other part uh, here is, you know, on the distribution side and the, the the commissions that can be paid across the value chain. And there's a cap on that. And that prohibits, um, you know, uh, companies like us to be able to decide what should that amount be that, that serves that entire value chain and, you know, uh, can, can help, uh, can incentivize people uh, you know, down the down this chain to to be able to uh, to increase penetration, right? So I think those are the two things that I would kind of um, uh, look at. But but having said that, like Pranay mentioned, uh, those are things that are being looked at by IRDA, and they are uh, you know kind of opening up the 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 regulations to make it uh, you know more inclusive. Mm -hmm. Great, um, and I might ask you. Both are not who, sure who's uh, best place, but in terms of things like data standards and, and privacy requirements, that's kind of a, a hot topic in Australia at the moment, and I'm, I'm sure sort of you know in many locations is 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 that something that's a high priority um, for regulator around you know data sovereignty and those things. Um, yeah, so you know my view on that is, and what I have uh, uh, kind of observed that companies when we work with companies. Um, they are highly sensitive to, uh, and it's not just one regulator when it comes to customer data, right? So you may be working with a bank to offer insurance to their customers, and therefore the bank is highly sensitive to where that data is being stored and how that data is being used, right? So an insurtech or even an insurer in that, for that matter, becomes highly sensitive to then how that data is, uh, is being stored and used. Um, so, so, you know, we as a company make it a practice that, you know, we have all our servers in India, we, we ensure that we follow the, the highest sort of, uh, standards for data, uh, you know, sort of protection and, and privacy, even though we may not be sort of mandated by regulation to do so. Uh, but, but as a general best practice, we kind of err on the side of caution and I, I think all companies should kind of do that, you know, just generally good for business. Mm -hmm. um, another topic I wanted to explore, Prane, was was really around, you know, India is such a sort of thriving established tech sector um, and, you know, obviously has, you know, a much lower kind of cost base than, than probably the Australian market. Uh, where do you see, you know, what, where, you know, that probably provides a, a bit of a challenge for the insurtechs coming in, in terms of how do they differentiate themselves and how they compete? Where do you see is there particular gaps or expertise that they should be thinking about, or or how do um, companies you sort of see coming in yeah. deal with those challenges? So, uh, yeah, so someone let me, let me highlight a few areas where I think uh, it's a bit nascent yet in India in terms of its development, right? And maybe that might offer you know certain opportunities for uh, Australian insure techs or others looking at the Indian sector. Obviously, you've seen a fair bit of work happening around, you know, the uh, the claims management distribution space, as uh, Vikul talks about, right? I think that's been an area of focus for a number of insure techs. Uh, obviously, you will continue to see a lot of innovation that will play out over the next uh, few years around that. As insurers look at the opportunities, as you know, insure techs look at it, but it's also a space where you have a large number of firms looking at the opportunity. I think there are a few areas where we. Uh, it's early days and, you know, there might be a, might be a play. I mean, there's the whole play around pricing underwriting, right? And how do you think about that and what you could do around that? So, you know, so you can think to that. You are entering an environment where you will have more flexibility as an insurer in terms of how you think about that. Uh, the regulator through a certain set of changes in the last few months has actually even, you know, introduced uh, more levels of flexibility. Um, you know, the different kinds of products, which we're seeing on the motor side, which is usage based behavior linked, right? That again is a space of innovation, which is just playing out in the Indian market. So how do you actually design solutions linked to that? I think the whole health space is again, you know, is an, is a really large opportunity, whether it's not just around claims management, or whether it's patient care management, for example, right? As you know, as uh, you move from just, uh, you know, just pair to actually an environment 
where you know you could more actively help manage uh, uh, help uh, manage disease and you know do patient care. I think, as I said, embedded insurance, something that the cruise firm actually looks at, is again something which you know there'll be a large opportunity because what's going to happen is with platforms getting established, large ecosystems getting established, you will have an opportunity to actually play on those platforms and ecosystems, and they will need you know the right solution providers to facilitate that, right? Uh, so you have a number of these areas which I would say are still nascent in terms of its development where there could be opportunities uh, with others with the right cost structure, the right solutions and the right offerings to actually get into that. Great. Um, Nicole, your, your views on that, where do you um, where do you see there's, there's potential opportunities? I mean, obviously your business is very much in that Im embedded space. Um, you, we have a lot of insure techs that are around um, you know, particularly sort of nat cat geospatial, um, you know, and and into sort of areas around sort of claims management and, and disaster response, those kind of things. Are these areas that, that you think are, are still developing or are there others? Yeah, so, uh, Simone, uh, I think I completely agree with Pranay on this. Uh, you know, what we've seen is that technology has... Uh, penetrated all aspects of life and industry, right? Uh, industry processes or the way industries work have changed. So for example, um, you know, traditional sort of, if you take logistics as, a, as an industry, right? There's a lot of intervention of technology in terms of app-based aggregators or, you know, fleet management uh, with the help of technology, right? So, so essentially at the core industry needs have changed, but, uh, you know, when you look at insurance products, the insurance products have remained sort of generic products and, uh, you know, processes have remained what they were 10 years ago and they haven't changed um, with the with the intervention of technology in other industries. Right. So what what we see in a lot of our partners and a lot of our clients is that they struggle um, to really, you know, kind of adopt these kind of insurance solutions as part of their core, uh, you know, products or their core offerings, just because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't integrate well with how they function. Right. So for example, if the entire transaction is through an online app based platform and here you've got to uh, fill, you know, physical forms with wet signatures to be able to issue a cargo assignment that is otherwise fully digital. Uh, you know, it just doesn't work. And, and that adds an added layer of uh, sort of complexity and cost uh, to the overall business, right? So I think there's a lot of opportunity where industry specific solutions need to be created, right? Embedded insurance is a, is a very vast sort of a broad, uh, broad term. But, but if you break it down to uh, industry specific solutions, uh, there is a lot of work that needs to be done. And I think, you know, if you look at logistics, you know, you, you, you could use technologies like asset tracking, you could use uh, connected devices and, you know, so on and so forth. And in some of those solutions, which we are already working with our, you know, partners in developing and, and sort of uh, building. The challenge is uh, not the technology alone, but willingness of insurers and carriers to be able to adopt that and use that data that comes from different sources uh, to be able to trust and underwrite on that behalf, right? Uh, and and that that's sort of a you know a bigger challenge that we see where where a traditional insurer can say that okay I trust this data and I'm willing to underwrite based on uh, based on the data that that comes through this non-traditional sort of source that I have not used before, right? So so I think that. There's a massive uh, uh, gap that that uh, intermediaries or in short text like us can can fulfill uh, on on that. So that's on sort of on the product innovation, and there are similar sort of opportunities on on the distribution side or uh, even even automation of you know various processes, uh, whether it's claims or you know kind of loss management and so on. Yeah, thank you. It sounds like a really familiar um, challenge of how you sort of work with the insurers and, you know, there's the, that gap between what they want to do and actually kind of do it in practice and how do they how do they embed and work with these these new technologies. Um, I guess I wanted to, I guess, ask both of you, um, I'll come back to you, 
Prane first is is really what are your advice overall for those that are looking to come into the sector? How how should they go about it? Um, yeah, what what given your kind of experience and then those you've been working with, um, you know, what's your kind of top tips for them? Yeah, so look, I think the next uh, three to five years, first of all, um, are going to see much more change than the last 10 did, right? That's just a cliched statement, but it's really going to play out because I truly believe the insurance sector is on the cusp of pretty rapid uh, disruption and innovation, right? Um, I think uh, as far as, look, it's a bit of an education for insurers in terms of how they work with insurtex, right? And I think insurtex have a lot to offer. Um, it is uh, going to be, you know, a certain level of, uh, but you know, the other thing that's happening with insurers is they are actually getting bombarded with a number of solutions in front of them, right? If you want to really think about claims management, if an insurer, the insurer today wants to look at it, there are probably 10 solutions that are just in front of them, right? How do you differentiate uh, is going to be critical. And how do you, uh, you know, convey to the insurer that you can actually collaborate with them in a manner which is, you know, which is truly a partnership, right? So it's incumbent on the insurer to do that, but it's also, you know, how does an insure tech actually collaborate with an insurer to truly help take a solution to market which will benefit them? I think um, there are lots of opportunities which, you know, which uh, as, uh, you know, Vikul was talking about, which are not that obvious, right? But I think if you really peel the onion, you will realize that India still offers you, you know, different slivers, different market segments, you know, whether it's around driving distribution reach, there's a fair bit of innovation still to happen around that. Whether it's product innovation, there's a lot to happen around that. So how do you, you know, stay agile in terms of sensing the opportunity and then you can quickly actually seize that and quickly go after that with the right uh, business model is going to be important. Right? Those would be my two bits. Great, thank you. Uh, and Vikul, you, how, what would your, be your, your advice to those um, those coming in? How do they find the, the ways to differentiate and, and um, identify those kind of gems of, of markets? I think I think the biggest advice. I mean, I I, I think uh, again agree with what Pranay has said, and I think he said it uh, you know very aptly. Uh, I think we do see or we are sort of at an inflection point, as I would like to call it, you know, the UPI moment for insurance, um, which would be driven by three factors, largely technology adoption, um, you know, a demographic shift, um, you know, in the way that we live, in the way that we work, and uh, sort of the regulatory tailwinds, you know, and that is going to drive uh, sort of secular growth uh, in this industry over the next five to 10 years, at least. Uh, and that presents a huge opportunity. And I think for Australian uh, insurtechs, I think the best way is to call Sam and connect with Prerup on the other side and, uh, you know, give us a call. Happy to talk anytime. And, and I think it's events like these where, you know, it creates more awareness, not only at the consumer level, but also at the at the provider level. Right. People who are working in the industry because um, uh, there, there is just a lot of change. There's a lot of newness in terms of products, in terms of technology, in terms of channels. And I think, uh, you know, we all need to do this uh, a little bit more often to be able to understand and see where the opportunity lies. And, uh, and I believe that there will be a lot of mutual opportunities where we can learn from each other, where we can collaborate and implement something uh, for the greater good. Wow, um, so, thank you. I think you've just, always gone into my next question. So, Sam, how are we for time? No, I was just going to say there is a couple of questions that have come in and okay. they're pretty right. rapid fire. So, um, given <laughs> Vicor referenced my name before, I thought I'd just jump in. Um, you, you, Prerac talked about a couple of events that uh, insure, in insure tech associations running, but uh, Pranay, Vickle, are there other events that you see in the market happening, maybe conferences that happen in, in a year that are worthwhile attending for companies that are coming over or are there any, um, whether they be insure tech or more broadly fintech, are, are there any events that are on your calendar? Uh, yeah, so I think, Sam, there are a lot of events around fintech as a broader, uh, yeah. uh, you know, sort of category and insure tech. Uh, you know, is essentially a smaller part or one part of the overall fintech ecosystem. Uh, so whenever there's a conference around fintech, there is some conversation around insurance as a as one of the financial services that that, that are being talked about, right? So 
so people can look at those and uh, you know we just had the global fintech festival in mumbai uh, just a couple of months ago um and and we have uh, the india fintech uh, awards which is i think today or tomorrow uh, so so there are, there are uh, you know frequent events but i don't think there is a focused effort uh, you know like what prera can team are doing on speci- specifically kind of bringing different um, players in the insurance industry on one sort of platform so definitely uh, you know i think uh, india insurtech association is doing a fantastic job on that but but you do have like i said broader events on the fintech domain and and certain industry uh, specific events which could be related to banking logistics or where insurance could be just a very small part of the overall solutioning that is needed or or requirements that that, that are there that's sort of been what i have maybe prerak has a better view on that uh, or Thanks, Vikul. Uh, Vikul, just adding, the, I think there are a couple of other events that are happening which are more insurance specific. So, for example, the Chambers of Commerce uh, on insurance is a topic. Uh, right. They do a fairly good job. We've got um, uh, FICI, the PhD Chamber of Commerce, CII, SHM, which are the kind of the four big chambers of commerce. Uh, they've got insurance events that they do every single year. Uh, and uh, you know, thankfully, InsureTech has now become at least one panel on each and every single one of them. Uh, and we're hoping InsureTech will become a couple panels over time. Uh, so. <laughs> It started to happen with the chambers of commerce, and those are other events I think that are great. Uh, there's the global fintech festival. Um, the presence of InsurTech, I actually got a chance to attend this year, was um, uh, smaller than I thought or hoped it would be. Uh, but we're hoping that uh, the India InsurTech Association will partner with them too, and by next year, uh, we'll have a greater yes. presence of our InsurTech members uh, at the global fintech festival as it comes up. I just had another so, question. And maybe one. Yep. Sorry, Simon, you go ahead. I was just going to ask, and I know you're all in, in different places in India, is there a particular location that is the heart of insurance in India? Um, that if people were going to come and do it, you know, where would they be opening? There's often a discussion when we talk to the Americans about where they should start up. Is that a, is that a topic for, for India? We've got most of the insurers in, uh, you know, in Mumbai, but you've got most of the cool guys sitting in Bangalore, right? So, in, so, you know, so there's a fair bit of traffic between Mumbai and Bangalore. You can't get it wrong. With, and, but, you know, you've got uh, hubs in Gurgaon and uh, Noida, for example, also emerging, right? So I would say, you know, there's a bunch of those locations where you can't go wrong with that. It depends upon, you know, I mean, Bangalore has like a great pool of talent, right? I think that's, that's a big advantage for Bangalore. But you've got, you know, certain pockets emerging in Bangalore and, uh, sorry, in Mumbai and Gurgaon as well. But obviously, Vikul and Peter are better guys to answer this. I think, Pranay, you got it absolutely right. Mumbai is the heart of insurance, if we had to put it that way. Uh, we've got uh, tremendous insurance talent, especially for insurance companies, that's it. But if you look at insured tech companies, insured tech companies are definitely, you know, Bangalore's got a massive presence, uh, Delhi and has got a massive presence, uh, and Mumbai is also there. Uh, but actually, uh, you know, the India Insured Tech Association now has members all over the country. We've got members out of Hyderabad, Kolkata, Ahmedabad, you know, you name it, and we've got a member. Uh, so, uh, you know, boundaries are uh, uh, kind of fading away uh, for us as a country, and especially with InsurTech, that's the case. I liked uh, Pranay's comment, all the cool guys are down in Bangalore. Um, we definitely see from an overall tech perspective that um, Bangalore is kind of known as the Silicon Valley of India, um, but there's definitely three hubs that have been highlighted. Mumbai, very well known for fintech, and obviously that's closely linked to insurance. Um, and then, uh, as Prarak says, there's Ingo Gowan, and there's a real emerging startup hub there as well across a broad range of industries. So um, one other question, and then we might just do some final comments, but um, we talked a bit about the regulators who are involved. Um, are there other really big players that we should know the names of uh, if you're an Australian company coming in? Is there... You know, who are the really big traditional names in the sector that we'd have to know if we wanted to, to get involved in the Indian sector? I mean, uh, let, let me try and uh, give my thoughts and then, you know, Rickon and Pedro should add to this. Uh, Sam, my view would be, look, the, the names are pretty uh, obvious, right? I mean, you've got, um, I would say, the larger uh, license and CNC insurers, right? I mean, those are worth looking at that. But I would say that the, uh, the one thing that the Australian insurtechs could do is 
uh, think about how they actually leverage some of the industry committees that are pretty well established to industry association, like Fiki, for example, right? It ran an insurance hackathon earlier in the year, right? Which I thought was a really good platform for a number of insure techs, right? It was done in collaboration with the IFSCA, uh, which I thought gave uh, insure techs a really good platform. It went through multiple rounds to showcase what they offer. Uh, you know, the government was a bit involved with that. The Fiki committee was involved. Uh, CII does similar events. You know, the, the industry associations actually in insurance are quite well established. Like I've been part of the Fiki committee for the last 10 years. It's only in the last, uh, you know, one or two years we've seen insurtechs coming on to that. And rightly so, they deserve their space. But it's some of those forums which, uh, which could be leveraged, which could really be used to showcase. And, you know, other uh, business association and business bodies that exist, right, to really showcase because I think there's a real opportunity to, to leverage that. As far as the companies are concerned, you know, there's a, there's a there's a standard set of companies that you know you could always go and you know approach and target them. But that would be my my views around that. Yeah, I think I think just to add to what Pranay said, right? Uh, I I, th I think the, the, in my mind there's sort of a dual approach, right? One which is a top down approach where you talk to the industry bodies and and you talk to the associations and you know sort of get a more broader understanding of the ecosystem but then you also kind of engage more deeply at at the ground level with certain companies that are operating uh, and these may not even be the large insurance companies because that again takes a long time and and you know uh, startups by uh, definition are more impatient and and therefore may not have you know uh, those long periods of time to sort of evaluate and 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 address right so so, so my advice would be to to work with smaller organizations, to work with startups, and and sort of do quick sort of MVPs or you know uh, quick quick sort of experiments and see what's working, what's not, and and if they see uh, a real sort of value, and then invest more time and effort into dealing with uh, you know the sort of the larger companies or the organizations. But I think a proof of concept. Uh, at the very beginning is very important to give confidence to the local players that this is a company that can, you know, provide a certain solution and, and can solve the problem. Okay, so I wonder if um, we want to just take a second, we're getting up close to the hour. Um, do you want to give a sort of a final summation, some final comments, um, and then I'll, I'll wrap things up? I don't know, maybe... Prarak, why don't we start with you? Prarak, are you Albert? Sorry. Yes, yeah. right, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you know, from my side, um, uh, I'll start by reiterating what I mentioned earlier. Uh, Australian insure tech companies, Australian market, Australian market is mature. Uh, especially in certain lines of business that where India has got tremendous potential on the non-life side. Uh, I'll use liability lines as, as an example, like where Australia has got like a very mature market. Uh, so I think startups coming from Australia, looking at India should come in with their eyes open. They should help actually fill in the gaps where they don't exist. Uh, number two, as Vikul mentioned, you know, it's best if you start to also look for local partners, uh, especially if you don't feel that India will be in your top three markets or your top five markets as you're going international, you may be better off actually partnering with a player on the ground. Uh, so that you don't over, end up over-investing in team and resources. Uh, that's maybe number two. Uh, and number three, uh, India is just up and coming, right? So being able to find that right first customer, client becomes very essential uh, for your success. May not be the large companies, maybe a mid-sized company, maybe a small company. Um, so as you start to network, start to ask some basic questions. You might have a very fancy, uh, uh, you know, uh, algorithm for predicting uh, NatCat risks for floods, right, essentially. Uh, but if the insurers are not ready for it, look, you can't sell it. So try to find the right partner uh, that you're going in with, uh, essentially. Quick summation. Thanks. And uh, Vikul, Panay, you know, what are your sort of final comments? Uh, okay, uh, I'll let Vikul close. So, you know, so I'll, uh, I'll just say that I think the, which I've, uh, which I've said right through the hour, I think uh, the opportunities are pretty immense. Uh, because you're going to see quite rapid change. I think the, the sector is ready for that. The regulator is creating an environment which will facilitate that. Um, I think the opportunities for collaboration are going to be multifold. 
Uh, it's how do you find the right solution and how do you figure out the right partners in the Indian context to just, you know, inform yourself about the Indian opportunity a bit more would be useful. And as you do that, I think uh, Australian insurtechs will realize that the opportunities for them are not limited. Actually, there's just a lot more that's going to happen in the Indian context. There are obviously lines of business that in Australia are very strong. Then. That's going to play out in India. There are lines of business, you know, which are a real need and opportunity in India, where also I believe the, you know, the Australian insurtechs could offer a set of solutions. The call over to you. Great. Thanks, Pranay. I think I would just like to add that while there is a massive opportunity that we are looking at, it's also challenging, right? And then anybody who wants to kind of uh, explore the market should come in with their eyes wide open and sort of understand those challenges and have a commitment uh, to to being in the market for 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 some time, right? It's it's not a quick win in my mind. I think it will take time. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, companies that have the perseverance to stay will eventually win, right? Like I said, it's going to be a secular growth ride over the next decade or more. Um, so if you stay, you will grow and you will win. But I think that's something that companies have to be very clear as to what time frame they are looking at when they're looking at this market. Because uh, it's not going to be a short win, in my view. Thank you to both of you. Simone, did you want to add anything there um, before That's I wrap up? That's great advice. Um, and I think this is just the start of a conversation. And, and really, thank you to everybody. I think, um, you know, this will be hugely valuable for all those that, that you know, watch this later on. And, um, yeah, look forward to more conversations with all of you. Yeah, thanks. And, and look, I agree. Um, look, India has for a long time... Um, been known globally as probably more of a cost arbitrage opportunity. And I know from the, the firms that we talk to now, that's an old conversation. That's an old idea. Um, India is now a global technology superpower. You know, the, the rate of growth uh, in the market is tremendous. And um, it's now become a central part to a lot of tech companies' strategies globally is how they're going to support their growth in an, you know, a potential market like this, but then also in other markets using uh, what's available in India. It's not just the talent, but also, as I think Pranay talked to earlier, the digitization of the economy and you know, how this has enabled uh, really innovative solutions for consumers. So what, what I took from today, I mean, we talked about the scale of the opportunity. We talked about how InsureTech in India is... Um, emerging across so many sectors, not just sort of the traditional insurance like healthcare, but, you know, so many new areas which it's touching on. Um, you know, to Vickle's point, India is a really complex market and there's no shying away from that. Um, for a company to come in and do business here um, can be daunting. It can be complex. India can often be seen as 29 or 30 different markets based on which states you're approaching. Um, and that's why I think Simone, your question earlier as to like, which city should I be targeting? That's a really sound kind of bit of advice, you know, because you're not going to be able to come in and wrap your arms around the whole of India. Um, you're going to have to take it in, in smaller pieces. But I think I've heard many times people talk about opportunity for partnership and in insure tech, but also broadly in tech, it, it's our belief as Austrade that that's the key to success for Australian companies coming in that, you know, there's a, there's a very um, alluring nature to what India can offer, but given its complexity and given in the way in which the market is differently structured to, say, uh, a market like Australia, um, partnerships are key to success. So there's traditional insurance players and then there's new emerging tech solutions like what Vickle has done with his platform. Um, we should be looking for partnerships across the spectrum. And um, just something that kept coming up and maybe is worth just spending one second on is, is UPI. Um, you know, it was mentioned a couple of times by people on the call today. Um, India's entire fintech si system has grown so rapidly off the back of some government policy. So first of all, there was a national ID card called the Adhar card. This enabled everybody or a lot more people to get a bank account. And this was sort of the foundational structure from which um, greater parts of the population have been able to access payments, 
credit and other financial services in really innovative ways. And, and that coupled with everybody having at least one smartphone um, has made these kind of app-based solutions permeate into new parts of the economy, which were traditionally unorganized. So there's a lot of opportunity that comes from all of that, but as pointed out, it's pretty complex. So what can we do from here? If, if you found this interesting, if you found this informative, um, Austrade in, in partnership with organizations in Australia and in India operates, um, a, operates a project called the Australia India Innovation Network. Um, so I love the terminology and I think Pranay came up with it, opening the, of the eyes. So I'm gonna steal that and say that the, the Innovation Network is about opening the eyes um, for Australian scale up and startup companies to the Indian market. Um, if you want to look at the market, please reach out to us and we'll be happy to um, guide you. We'll be happy to assist you. We run a lot of these kind of webinars. We also run in-market cohorts uh, where people come in and we've just done some uh, in some sectors. So please reach out. We'll be happy to you know, share with you what's on the plan, but also connect you to everybody who's been on the call today. Um, if you've seen a particular thing that you want to dive deep into with anybody, so there is another webinar coming up on the 9th of December. That's going to be looking at the opportunity in Australia, um, potentially for Indian uh, organisations in the insure tech space. So encourage you, if that's of interest to you, encourage you to join that. Uh, I think it's going to be a really insightful session. Um, but with all of that said, I really want to just thank uh, Pranay Vikul for your time and your insights today. I thought they were extremely valuable. And then also to our partners in, in getting this off the ground, Simone at InsureTech Australia, Prerac and his team as well at the Indian InsureTech Association. It's not possible to deliver this kind of thing as a, as a lone wolf. So we, we've really appreciated your support and uh, making it possible. So yeah, thank you to everyone who's joined in and um, we'll be making the recording available to everybody who had registered and to the, the membership of the organizations um, who we've partnered with. And we look forward to seeing some more faces on the next uh, webinar on the 9th of December. Thanks everyone, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Sam, you guys are doing a thank fantastic job. Thank, thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you.